I'm Brandon Smith, founder of altmarket.com and Gorilla Think Tank. So I guess the question is, how the hell did I just do that? Well, I'm going to show you exactly how, and I'm going to show you how to repeat the process regardless of the range you're shooting at. Let's talk about the theory behind ballistic loophole shooting and how it works real quick. I'll try to summarize this down as much as I can, as quickly as I can. First off, anyone who knows tactical shooting or long-range shooting knows about uh, certain aspects of this. The first aspect being the concept of near zero and far zero. To explain it real quickly, and I'll put up a, another, I'll put up a more professional graphic so you can take a look at it, but to explain it quickly, basically you have your rifle and your scope. Your scope is adjusted and when you're shooting at distance let's say for this example like we did outside we'll shoot at a hundred yards when you adjust your scope to hit it any target at distance uh, to, you know regardless of the distance um, your line of sight in your scope is being adjusted down. So we'll draw that here. Here's your line of sight for your scope. This means when you are firing your bullet, as your scope is adjusted down, your barrel is aimed up. All right, your barrel is being aimed up and it's lobbing your bullet basically in an arc To your far zero. Now as you can see the path of your bullet or the trajectory of your bullet is crossing your line of sight of your scope twice. Once here and once at the target. The first point at which your bullet crosses your line of sight is called the near zero. The second point at the target is called your far zero. A lot of people think that ballistic loophole shooting is shooting through a loophole exactly at your near zero point. The problem is it doesn't quite work that way. Usually your near zero, depending on the distance you're shooting, is going to be dozens of yards. It might be 30 yards or, or less or more, depending on the distance you're shooting at. Obviously, if you're adjusting your rifle to shoot at uh, to shoot through a loophole at exactly the near zero point, um, no room you're going to run into in most cases is going to be 30 yards long, or 25 yards, or 40 yards. However long, if you're talking dozens of yards, you're not going to be able to set up your rifle to shoot through that loophole at exactly the near zero point. The problem is, whenever you see these graphics of near zero and far zero, they're actually a little misleading. So let's take a look at our line of sight and our bullet trajectory as if we're, we're magnifying up close. So here I've drawn our scope trajectory again. Here's our near zero. And here is our far zero. If you were to look at this situation up close in your bullet trajectory up close, you would find that it actually comes, your bullet trajectory comes very close to the line of sight of your scope long before it hits the near zero point. Then it crosses over to the far zero point. So, your bullet is coming within, you know, in inches or even millimeters of the line of sight of your scope before it ever hits the near zero. This allows us to adjust our rifle much closer to a loophole as long as you can see your line of sight with your scope through the loophole. and as long as your bullet is passing very close within your line of sight then we can have a much smaller room in in my uh at the beginning of this video 
I'm sitting at only 25 feet instead of 25 yards at a, at a, at a 100 yard target. So again, you do not need to set up your rifle at, uh, to shoot through a loophole at the near zero point in the path of your bullet. All you need to do is find a spot in that distance from the loophole where your bullet comes close to the line of sight within uh, an inch or, or within millimeters of your line of sight. And, and as long as you can see your target through that loophole, and as long as the bullet is passing close to the line of sight, you should be able to shoot through it just fine. The question is, how do we find that point uh, between the near zero and your scope? How do we find that point where your bullet passes extremely close to the line of sight without hitting the near zero point? Where is that point in between? How do we find it? Well, as soon as we step outside, I'm going to show you exactly how you can find it, adjust your rifle to find that point. What they do in the military, supposedly, is that they give their snipers a top secret equation in order to calculate uh, the distance of their rifles from the loophole and find this point at which the trajectory comes extremely close to the line of sight. I imagine that the equation has something to do with the triangle. It's, I imagine it's a tr trigonometric equation that has something to do with the triangle between the height, height of your scope and the line of your bore, and then also the arc of your bullet as it crosses your line of sight. However, we don't actually need the equation in order to calculate or find this point at which your bullet comes close to your line of sight. Let's step outside right now and I'll show you exactly how you can find this point for your loophole without the top secret military equation. Before you start uh, your the process of ballistic loophole shooting, make sure you have a rifle with uh, that's running a, a mil dot scope or a scope with uh, mil radian hash marks, something with a pre precision reticle. This is what you're going to need to do this. I do not recommend using a scope with a simple bullet drop compensator or something along those lines or a red dot. It's just not going to work. You need to have a precision scope. So here's how you can do ballistic loophole shooting. And it's actually a very simple process. You don't need the secret military equation or anything like that. All you need is a laser bore sighter and a tape measure. Um, I'm running a Wheeler laser bore sighter that's magnetic. And just stick it to the front of the rifle barrel. So once you have your laser bore sighter set up, the next thing you're going to do is adjust the distance of your rifle from the loophole until the laser is pointed out the loophole and you can see the target out of the loophole with your scope. As long as your laser is not visible on the edge of the loophole, and as long as you can see your target through the loophole, then you should be able to hit that target without striking the edge of the loophole. Right now we're looking at my loophole, which is two inches by two inches. My rifle is at around 25 feet, or almost exactly 25 feet, from the loophole to my objective lens of my scope. Right here, as I adjust, my laser exits, exits the loophole, and I can see my target through the loophole. Right about there. So, at this point, I should be able to shoot my target and not hit the edges of the loophole at all. Well, obviously, you're not going to want to measure the distance from your loophole to your rifle with your laser bore sighter every time you try to shoot through a loophole. Uh, it's not practical. It's going to take a lot of time to do that in most cases. So, what I recommend doing is that you test at different distances. Say you're shooting at... 200 yards, 300 yards, 400 yards. You want to set up your rifle beforehand and test shoot at those different ranges and see how far your scope needs to be at each range. I recommend increments of 50 yards. So every 50 yards, 
measure where your scope needs to be from the loophole and then shoot make sure you're hitting the target and if you hit the target write down in your your log your shooter's log or some kind of a dope chart what distance your rifle needs to be from the loophole depending on what distance you're shooting at so have your log set up every 50 yards my rifle needs to be here at 100 here at 150 here at at six here at seven here at eight here at 850 so on and so forth again this uh, loophole shooting distance and the chart that you're using for your loophole shooting distance, the, the distance of your rifle from the loophole, is going to be different depending on the rifle that you're using and the scope, and the, how high your scope is, how it's set up. Every rifle is going to be different. So you need to, uh, it's not enough for me to give you a chart for my rifle. It's not going to work for your rifle. So set up your rifle, go through the process every 50 yards, every 100 yards or so, uh, check the distance, measure the distance with your measuring tape from the loophole to your objective lens of your scope. Make sure your laser bore sighter is not hitting the edges of the loophole. And write it down, each distance, write down how uh, far your rifle needs to be from the loophole shooting at that distance. One interesting aspect of this that I found with uh, uh, ballistic loophole shooting and distancing your rifle is that the farther away your target the easier it tends to be to find your target in that in that loophole and not hit the edges with your with your bullet. Um, this is because the farther away your target is, the wider your field of view is. I've been sitting on this information for about three years now, debating on mainly debating on how is it worth putting the video out and catching all the flack that I'm going to get for this. And I've decided recently that, yes, it, it is worth the flack. I think the most common complaint about this video will be that ballistic loophole shooting is only useful as a sort of uh, assassin's tool. I don't really see this as true. If you look throughout history, assassins never really needed specialty skills in order to achieve their goals. Uh, if they're determined, then in a lot of cases they can be successful with almost nothing on hand. What uh, ballistic loophole shooting is very useful for is as a defensive measure against a larger attacking force or a more technologically advanced force. It allows for just a few trained individuals to hold off a much superior force. Some of the ways it does this is first and foremost it makes a shooter almost virtually invisible. It hides more obvious indicators like uh, dust markers. In most cases it's going to hide the muzzle flash of the rifle. It hides most if not all of the initial muzzle blast leaving only the supersonic crack well, way down range. It makes the shooter invisible to thermal imaging because as most of you know from watching my previous video Thermal imaging does not see through walls. Loophole shooting also reduces the need for the shooter to relocate after each shot, meaning he can choose a solid position, uh, fire, and then keep that position without having to relocate after every single shot. No existing sensor technology in use by any military or terrorist organization today is going to find a loophole shooter. Their only option would be to randomly smash buildings with artillery in order to bring the roof down on your head if they can get lucky. In short, ballistic loophole shooting is the perfect tactic for the underdog or the freedom fighter. It evens the odds with a little more than a, pre a precision rifle, a precision scope, a box of ammo, and some skill. Another criticism I expect to receive is that I somehow received help from someone within the military uh, in order to put together this information and make this video. When I released the, the video on the thermal evasion suit, uh, Cracked Magazine, which used to be a, I guess a humor magazine, but now it's sort of a leftist rag, they put out an article listing my uh, thermal ghillie as one, of, one in a, item in a list 
of items that would help facilitate civil war in the United States. They insinuated in that article that I, I must have received help from someone with uh, someone in within the military, someone with uh, drone, recent drone experience. Uh, I can say unequivocally, I did not receive any help when designing my suit, and I also did not receive any help from anyone within the military when putting together the video for, for loophole shooting. You don't have to be a genius to figure this stuff out. All you need to be is sort of relentless in your pursuit of information and solving problems. And that's really what this uh, channel is all about. That's what Guerrilla Think Tank is all about. It's uh, solving seemingly insurmountable problems with very simple solutions. If you'd like to see more training videos like this one, please do consider uh, sending us a donation. Some of the next training videos I'd like to do for you guys include how to defeat body armor and ballistic plates, how to set up secure and long-range communications, and anti-sensor tactics beyond evading thermal vision. Making these videos is costly and time-consuming, so the more donations I receive, the more videos I can make. Please check the description below this video in order to find the link to the donations page, as well as the link to my thermal video, my thermal evasion video. If you found this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe below, and I just want to thank you for watching.